Are you not entertained? Me? Gladiator 2 released a couple of weekends ago in 2024 and is directed by Ridley Scott because what Ridley Scott wants, Ridley Scott gets. Ridley Scott is also behind such films like The First Gladiator, Black Hawk Down, Alien, Blade Runner, and one of my favorite movies, The Martian. And this film is starring Paul Mescal, Pedro Pascal, Joseph Quinn, Fred Hedginger, Leo Raz, Derek Jacoby, Connie Nielsen, and Denzel Washington. Gladiator 2 takes takes place 20 years after the final moments of the first Gladiator movie, where Lucius is now in hiding, living with his wife and child in a foreign land, that at the start of this movie is conquered, of course, by Rome. So Lucius, the little boy from the first Gladiator movie, becomes enslaved and is now a gladiator, and must fight in all of the games honoring the general who conquered his nation. Well, Lucius makes it a goal in his life to fight the general in combat in Gladiator games in the Colosseum, so that he can act his revenge. So here we are, we finally have the sequel to Gladiator, a sequel, a movie that has been talked about at least for 20 years. Probably from the moment the first Gladiator movie came out and it was a huge success, was nominated for Best Picture, and hell, won the damn thing. When that happens, movie studios are like, okay, how can we capitalize more on all of this fun stuff? Let's make a franchise and let's roll in the money, y'all. But for some reason, Ridley Scott took his time with this thing, even though he would constantly be asked over the last at least 20 years about a sequel to Gladiator and he would always give little hints like oh yeah the story's coming along and we're moving in the right direction we're having ideas and meetings about it and with all this talk about oh yeah a sequel is in production yeah we're talking about it and every year that went by and every year that went by and then another year goes by this movie became very similar to the Avatar movies not in story quality or visual effects quality no just in behind the scenes talk because the Avatar sequel was something that I didn't believe until it officially released in theaters and I was able to go and see it. Same thing with this movie. I didn't believe that this movie was coming out even though they announced it was going to come out at the end of 2024 in November sometime. I was still skeptical. Like, I'm not believing that because they've set previous release dates many years ago for a sequel and never came about. But here it is. Ridley Scott can rest easy. I see that they're already talking about possibly doing a Gladiator 3, which this movie definitely lends itself to a follow-up. You could definitely... There's more story to tell here. At the end of the first Gladiator movie, I don't think there was a lot of story to have been told because it started with Maximus and by the end of that movie, spoiler alert, sorry, he dies. And then supposedly Rome was going to be formed in a republic that was going to be ran by the senators and all the politicians. So at the end of that movie, I'm thinking, I don't, I don't think we need a, a sequel to this. The story was pretty solid and concrete and it concluded. It resolved itself. I think we should just move on with another different original idea. But this movie basically undoes everything from that movie because the Senate didn't take power and we have two new emperors who are little tiny brat siblings, brother and brother, and the gladiator games are still going on. So it's like everything that happened in the first movie was like, okay, well that was pointless. Here we are in this story. And while I think this film on its own, by itself, its story is pretty solid. Because we're calling it a sequel to the first one, I'm asking myself the question constantly while watching this movie, why the fuck are we making this thing? We need to continue the story of Lucius from the little boy from the first movie, because apparently even though he was okay at the end of that film and he was carrying off Maximus's body from the Colosseum, yeah, apparently, Connie Nielsen said, Hey, come over here, son. Come over here. And I'm going to sneak you out of here because your life is in danger. Because you're Prince of Rome. Were you getting the danger from the first movie at the end of that? I wasn't getting it, but apparently it happened. And that's why we have this movie. And the story follows basically the same eh, similar beats from the first one. It's a gladiator who's inspiring, or at least trying to inspire an uprising to overthrow the emperor, to give the city back to its people, and 
I guess a little spoiler alert in here, he definitely gets farther, Lucius definitely gets farther in this movie than Maximus did in the first one. Remember in the first one when they were going to sneak Maximus out of the Colosseum and out of the combines of gladiator combat and he was going to be sent to his army, his loyal 10,000 soldiers who will storm the capital and take the city back and give it to the people. Well the same thing happens here with Pedro Pascal's character, he's the general, he's the popular one out of it. Basically, he's the Maximus from the first movie, kind of. It's like Maximus was split into two different characters for this film. We have Lucius, and then we have Pedro Pascal. Sorry, I forget his name from the movie. It's kind of forgettable, actually. For any of you that remember season four of Game of Thrones, I'll stop talking. But the plot of Maximus from the first one is split in two, and Pedro Pascal's character is going to go off and get the army ready and storm the capital, but then we also have the other story of Maximus from the first movie that's in gladiator form. He's going to win the hearts of everyone in the Colosseum in gladiator combat. So the sequel basically does what almost every sequel in the history of movies does. It just does the same thing as the first one, just maybe ups the ante a little bit or does something just a little bit bigger than the first one did, but it's basically the same movie. That being said, the gladiator combat scenes that we get in here are awesome. There's one battle in here where they actually flood the ground of the Colosseum and they bring in sharks. How they were able to do that, I have absolutely no idea, but they bring in sharks and they're swimming around and they actually have a battle scene on ships and they're storming each other's ships and burning them and throwing people overboard and the sharks are coming at them which apparently is historically accurate that was a capability of the Colosseum my questioning is how did you bring a shark alive and get them to the Colosseum but you know semantics I guess so while the battle scenes that we get in here in the Colosseum I think are grander and bigger I am still not feeling the emotional impact and the on the edge of my seatness that I had for the first Gladiator movie where I was caring about all of those Gladiators and hoping that all of them would survive each one. In this movie, all I cared about was Lucius. I didn't care about anyone else who was out there fighting along with him, so I'm just like, let's make sure that he's okay. Oh, he is? Of course he is. He's the main character, so we're just moving on. All these other faceless, nameless people, yeah, I don't give two shits about. If I had to pick one thing that you could really sink your teeth into and just sit back and relax and have a great time watching, of course it's Denzel Washington. He plays the owner of all the gladiators and he's the one politicking behind the scenes trying to make an extra buck here or trying to get a position thrown at him in government and in politics. And he owns the space whenever he's on screen. Whenever he's there you know that this guy is the one in control of everything. And it's Denzel Washington. If you have him in your movie you're gonna get a fantastic performance out of him regardless of how the overall movie shapes out you have something great with Denzel, so if you go into this movie to watch it, definitely check him out. Everything else, though, just felt like it was rinse and repeat from the first one for me, and I know that this film is getting pretty good reviews from critics and from audiences. For this guy, though, I mean, I, I grew up on the first Gladiator movie, and I absolutely loved it, and I definitely think it deserved to win Best Picture, but this one, it just feels like a pointless rehash of that film and it completely undid <laughs> the sacrifice of Maximus and completely undid everything that they seem to have accomplished at the end of the first Gladiator movie. Apparently they accomplished nothing. I'm gonna give Gladiator 2 two and a half out of five Blu-rays. I found that if you have a goal that you might not reach it, but if you don't have one, then you are never disappointed. And I gotta tell you, it feels Phenomenal. So guys, if you've seen Gladiator 2, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below and let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you the next time I release next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel. But in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.